let's let's come to a theory of, of medicine's theory on, on cancer. Medicine's theory on cancer, it's one cell that goes wild. All of a sudden, one day decides to go crazy. It grows into a tumor or into a mass. It's friable, it breaks in, it erodes into a blood vessel lymphatic, a cell breaks off, they get into the vessels and off they go, traveling around at random, and gonna end up at random at some spot. That's called metastasis. Prostate cancer almost always goes to the bones. I don't know how many years you've played with it, but you've seen it and you, you study it. Always loads. That shows there's nothing random. Okay, why can it go to 20 spots in the bones first and never ever go to inside the intestinal mucosa? Never in history. And just 30 feet of intestines there. You'd think it would find one time would accidentally find its way in there. Never in history. So there's no randomness. So the medicine's whole theory of random. All of a sudden, you've got to start to question the randomness. If a cell breaks off by my prostate okay, and gets into a vein, it goes into the heart, goes in the right chamber of the heart. The right chamber then pumps it to the lungs where it gets aerated. Now, the lungs, the circulation breaks down to tiny capillaries. It's called alveoli, and it's really tiny. The metastatic cell would actually get trapped in the lungs and never, ever get back to the heart. How come every one of the metastases doesn't end up in the lungs? Okay, from the lungs, it's got to go back to the heart, and from there, it goes around to the rest of the body. So their whole theory that they've been using smoke and mirrors for the past hundred years is just lies. And it's all there to keep you frightened and crazy. Let's look at the reality of it, though. Okay, what you'll find in cancer, and the studies have done bowing back to Carrie Reams in the 30s and 40s, Vincent in Germany and Switzerland in the 50s, in France and Switzerland in the 50s, where they made oxygen and pH levels. The human being now, we consider the pH, alkaline, uh, the venous blood, 7.4 is normal. In 1950s, it was 7.32 to 7.35. We've gotten a little worse. Medicine never even measures it past to the hundredth. Most cancer cases, they're already there in 7.5, 7.55. They get very alkaline, and their oxygenation decreases. When you've got low oxygen and alkaline blood, the mold grows. Okay. Prostate cancer, and this is anything, it makes no difference. Molds, uh, cancer is a type of mold. Arthritis is actually a type of mold. We'll die in several, they found three types of molds in Egyptian coffins. So there's three different ways the body actually molds, but we should mold in the coffin. Prostate cancer, like I was saying, prostate cancer, what the hell is it is, if you look at the body like a lump of cream cheese or a peach, and you got a mold on the peach and you cut the mold off, the peach is still rotten or they're mold. Okay, you cut the mold of the cream cheese, there's no vessel, the next day you get 12 spots. Prostate cancer goes to the bones because the mold feeds on calcium almost exclusively. That's its single major food source. It's just plain and simple. Doesn't that theory make more sense than the theory that they have? Okay. Um, and they haven't, and you give the results. They, they don't know their answers. They haven't cured a thing. They're still guessing in the, wood, in the wind, and they've had 100 years at the ball game. Why should I listen to their theories? If their theory, to me, their theories have been proven wrong over 100 years because they haven't found one cancer they've been able to stop and control. No. Their whole concept makes no sense. And insanity is when you keep on doing the same thing over and over and hoping for a different result. Okay. <laughs>